Hello and welcome to Worship with Middle Creek Presbyterian Church. This being the first Sunday of the month, we are going to have communion. And so if you don't have the elements for communion with you, I encourage you to pause this recording and go and get some kind of a bread and something to drink so that we might celebrate together later in the service. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship by singing together our first hymn, America the Beautiful. This is a good 4th of July song. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. O beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine, till all success be nobleness, and every gain divine. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. We know that God has blessed us, but sometimes we complain that we haven't been blessed enough. That's sin, and we know that we can come to God with those sins and be forgiven. Let us confess our sins now together. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, sound learning, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Make us who come from many nations with many different languages a united people. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. You love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. Your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do also for him. But we walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. Forgive us, we pray. 
Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I want to remind you that Jesus forgives you. If you're in the room with somebody, remind them, Jesus forgives you. And if you need to remind yourself, tell yourself, Jesus forgives me. God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by praying together the prayer for illumination. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have but one verse for our scripture reading today, and it comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 1893, several professors from Wellesley College visited the World's Fair in Chicago on their way to Colorado, where they would be teaching summer school. The women later compared the wonders of the man-made fair with the glory of God's handiwork in the Rockies. At the end of the summer, the professors decided to visit Pikes Peak. One of them, Catherine Lee Bates, wrote, we hired a prairie wagon. Near the top, we had to leave the wagon and go the rest of the way on mules. I was very tired. But when I saw the view, I felt great joy. All the wonder of America seemed displayed there with the sea-like expanse. It was then and there, as I, looked, as I was looking out over the sea-like expanse, a fertile country spreading away so far under those ample skies, that the opening lines of the hymn floated into my mind. She wrote, O oh, beautiful for spacious skies, and finished the rest of the poem in short order, but after returning to Wellesley, she forgot them amidst her notes. It wasn't until two years later that she unearthed them again. They were published on July 4th, 1895. She did make some revisions before they were set to the tune Materna, which is America the Beautiful, by Samuel Ward. The words to this beautiful national hymn are not simply about the greatness of our country. They move past words of praise for our country's scenic beauty, courageous settlers, and the sacrifice of its heroes, and encourage us to pray for our country. Each verse is completed with a plea for God's grace, God's healing, and God's refining, until we as a people achieve true brotherhood, law-abiding control, and noble character. Catherine Bates felt deeply about the message of her patriotic hymn. We must match the greatness of our country with the goodness of personal godly living, she says. If only we could couple the daring of the pilgrims with the moral teachings of Moses, we would have something in this country that no one could ever take from us. Those are very interesting words, aren't they? Our passage from Second Chronicles was spoken by God to Solomon upon the completion of the temple in Jerusalem. This was a great accomplishment, and Solomon was very proud of what he had done. God blessed the temple as a house of prayer and promised to remain present there as long as the people remained faithful. Those words from 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. 
they are followed by a warning that if the people do not remain humble and do not keep their trust firmly in God's provision, that they will lose the land that God gave them. God has blessed our nation, and we have accomplished much, but we need to remain humble and recognize that these blessings come from God. We are caretakers of all that God has given us. We are blessed to be a blessing. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. We are blessed, but we are flawed. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. We are blessed, but we have not reached our full potential as God's people. America, America, may God thy gold refine till all success be nobleness and every gain divine. May we live in humility, justice, and love, seeking God's blessing on our country and each of our lives. Amen and amen. We as Presbyterians remember that God has claimed us, and one of the most beautiful statements of that claim that God has on us is the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism. Let me say it to you now. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. We now come to our time of communing together, and I want to remind you that you do belong to Jesus Christ. He has called you to come to this table, to eat and to drink, to become one with him and one with everybody who calls themselves Christian and who is claimed by the Lord. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, we know that you bless us. We know that you bless us so that we might be a blessing, so that we might care for others, so that we might do your will. And Lord, we know that you have blessed us from the beginning of time, that you fed your people as they wandered through the wilderness, that you continued to feed your people in the land of milk and honey, and that you sent Jesus the bread of heaven into this world, the bread of life into this world, that he might feed us as well. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling today, who need to feel your presence. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are receiving treatment and therapy, for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. We pray for those struggling with mental illness and addiction. And for those for whom life is so overwhelming they consider suicide. We pray for caregivers. And we pray for those who mourn. 
Lord, we pray for the poor and the oppressed. We pray for those who worry about where their next meal might come from or whether they can find or keep their homes and jobs. We pray for those who find themselves living in violence, especially when the violence is in their own home. We pray for those dealing with human-made and natural disasters. And we pray for those who continue to put their lives on the line to help us in our times of need and to fight for the causes of justice and freedom. We pray for our leaders here and around the world. And we pray for your church that we might continue to be your voice, your hands, your feet, proclaiming your good news to this lost and broken world. Now we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon these elements that they might be moved from a common to a sacred use, that in eating and drinking them we might be made one with you and one with each other. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which has been broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup, and he said, This cup is the new covenant of salvation poured out in my blood for the sins of many. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim Christ's death, yes, but also his resurrection and ascension until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take and eat. This is Christ's body broken for you. Take and drink. This is Christ's blood poured out for you. Lord, you have fed us, you've satisfied our thirst. Now send us out by the power of your Holy Spirit that we might proclaim your good news of salvation to all those who need to hear. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, next Sunday, July 11th, we're having a special Sunday at Middle Creek Church. Our, we will have only one service at 930. And at that service, the Good News Band from Rockton will be playing. They play a lot of the old-timey uh, country gospel hymns, and we just love it. I do believe that that service will be indoors, and so um, you can feel free to come and enjoy uh, the air conditioning, which, we, of course, we've been needing a lot this summer, and also uh, enjoy the music. We encourage you also to please give to the causes that, um, that you de deign, uh, that God has called you to give. Uh, whether it be a food pantry or whether it be the ministry of Middle Creek Presbyterian Church. We are collecting several offerings uh, right now. One, excuse me, is our regular offering, and that goes towards the work of the church, uh, not only here in our building, but also throughout the community and the world. We are also collecting money for Church World Service Kits. And for those of you who've been part of our community, we usually ask you for different items to fill the kits. This time, we're asking you to take the money that you would have spent 
purchasing the items and to give it to the Presbyterian women and they will then send the money to Church World Service. So a typical hygiene kit, which is used to help people who um, who no longer have access to good um, clean hygiene products, um, that, that kit and the school kit, which is used for children who've been displaced from their school and, need, and their supplies and need those, those kits run about $15, just to give you a sample idea of how much to spend. And the cleanup bucket, which is used in the case of floods or um, other or fires or other places where the building may be saved but it needs a major cleanup, that runs between fifty and sixty dollars. And so we would encourage you to give uh, that offering. Uh, you may send a check to Middle Creek PW. That's for Presbyterian women um, to the address of the church, and that money will then go into the pot, and we will be sending off though that money to Church World Service, they will assemble the kit. If you're able to also provide an extra $2, that will help get whatever kit you have supplied to the people who need it. And so I would encourage you to give for that. For those who are helping people helping people, uh, during July, we are wanting to encourage you to give Hamburger Helper or one of the helpers and uh, are also... Um, brownie or cake mix, that type of a thing. We do have a barrel in the church, and so you can drop it off there. Um, if you even just put a bag uh, in the doorway, uh, we'll make sure that it gets into the barrel if you are unable to do that. Or go into the church office and talk to our secretary, and she will show you where to put it. Let us dedicate all of our offerings to God. Dear Lord, you are so generous to us, and we are thankful. We offer these gifts back to you out of that sense of gratitude. Use the gifts so that you might be proclaimed and your love might be felt by the people throughout this world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. And now let us give each other a blessing and a response. The grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you. That you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love both now and forevermore. Amen. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.